Hey, hey, I have here today one of the Season 2 or Year 2 LEGO Hidden Side sets. It's the Lighthouse of Darkness. A nice little kind of corner unit with a decent selection of figures. Before I get into details, here's a quick look at everything together, mostly for the sake of scale. So you see there is a dockside level, there's a lower level, second level, upper level for the main structure, and there's also a cave area back here. The whole thing is intended to look worn down and thus extra creepy, but honestly, from any reasonable distance, it doesn't look that bad. I mean, it has some, some stickers that represent wear on the outer surface, but other than that, you know, the colors are bright enough and it just looks, I don't know, believable to me, like something that would actually be in operation today. They did a nice job, actually, with the cliffside, all the rock work there. It's fairly functional, as I will show you later on, but, you know, it looks, again, fairly believable until you get into the hidden side specific stuff. So this, in particular, is for ghost detecting activities. You rotate this around to expose the three different major colors that are used in the hidden side augmented reality app that you can get for many mobile devices. You would scan a color in the game and, you know, using your, your camera through the app, and then based on the color that you choose, that would set your detection parameters for looking for a specific classes of ghosts. Now back here, this cave space is decent. Uh, in previous videos, previous reviews of sets that use large, small or medium sized, uh, what we call ugly rock pieces, uh, these preformed large rock pieces, I've said, you know what, use the space behind those. There's space back there, especially with the bigger ones. Use that as, as a cave. Use that as explorable space. And LEGO has kind of doubled down on that idea here, building back behind the halfway preformed rock face. And this is intended to be used. You're supposed to put figures down in here. You can even discover something. A little spike piece there, done with a golden uh, unicorn horn piece. I like that. The tan is supposed to represent sand. So you can just imagine when the tide goes up, this all gets filled up with water. I've actually been to caves like this uh, in real life that work just exactly the same way. You don't have any dry access when the tide is in. And also back here, I actually already knocked it off, but what normally would hang from the ceiling from a corner is this bat, and it just has a clip on it. So there's a bar up in there, and it would sit up in there. You wouldn't be able to see it that well. Anyway, but that is one thing you can put in there. That's it for this space. There's also something up on top, another discoverable thing. Now, these have the green tile beneath to, again, signal to the app. So various later game activities will be able to, to use that to, to do detecting activities. This is also a spot to put a figure to scan it through the app. It's just a particular place where the app will be looking for things based on what you need to do. Like if you need to search a particular minifigure for a ghost that may be possessing them that you didn't even realize. All this back here is very awkward. How it sticks out, it's got the red thing at the end of it. That's, yeah, that's very, very awkward. And it's related to a mechanism that's built into here that means all of this is unusable space, unfortunately. All right, we'll come back to that though. First, let's get up to the inside of the lighthouse itself. I got the door open there to let a little bit more light in. You see, there's not much space. This is the ground level of the lighthouse. And there's just a seat, a table, and I guess that's supposed to be a chessboard there. Hmm. All right, that looks a little bit lonely. There's no ladder or anything to get up to the next level. And the next level is even smaller. There's a single seat there, and then there's a mixing panel and a microphone. So I guess this is the comms room and or control for a PA system. And then finally, you get up to the very top. And hey, that is not what's supposed to be there. So what you expect to see in the lighthouse is this, right? The lens, or the light itself is, but that is part of the possession of the entire lighthouse It's involved with that. So the whole thing can get possessed, and uh, no matter what, on one side you're going to see the right thing, on the other you're going to see the wrong thing, whichever way you want it to be. So if I wanted it to be possessed right now, well, if I'm looking at it from this side, I need to rotate this around, and I'm just turning this knob up here. It's just directly connected right through. There's another color that potentially could be scanned to let the app know that the place is now 
uh, is now fully, you know, possessed. No, uh, no glass is in there. No faux glass is in those windows, which is too bad. It would have been nice if they included those parts. And then the balcony doesn't have a lot of space, but you can put figures on the corners and just barely inside of here, as long as they don't have a lot of accessories on them. So you can put them around there. And then looking around the outside a little bit closer, you know, all these spots that represent wear are done with stickers. And it looks pretty nice at the front with the door, got the ingot pieces on the sides, and also these torches. Now, these can open up. This is also related to the possession of the entire thing. So those open up to show teeth inside. You may have seen those from behind. More teeth here. So all those teeth that are very awkward. And then the big eye. And then finally, if we go all the way down. So here's another spot where you can discover something. It's too bad that these don't all have space to put something in there. Like the one had the spike piece, the unicorn horn piece. That was nice. I like that. You know, doesn't use very many pieces, but to have something there, even if it's just a, a stud or a tile that you can hide in the space, it's very convenient. I feel like it adds to the possibilities for people of all ages. And then there's something else that you can discover right here. Look at that. There's a crab down there. Imagine if that crab was possessed it's in the lavender color. And then also there's this blue color, which can be scanned by the app. And this pier is pretty nice. And I especially like what they did here for the very simple lamp at the end or lantern at the end. So the last thing that's related to the possession of the entire location is for this back here. You push that in and this happens. These toes come out and they spread out. They're like claws. They kind of look like teeth also, so maybe claw teeth or tooth claws, but just imagine that's like the foot of the thing. And then it just has lots of teeth and then it has a single eye. So that's how the whole thing becomes possessed. But most of the time you don't see most of that stuff. So I feel like for folks who aren't even really into the hidden side theme itself, this is a very good starting point to make just a corner lighthouse unit. You know, you can leave off these pieces leave off the purple pieces inside if they're too visible to you or don't just leave them in there because they're not that visible most of the time. Leave this stuff retracted. I'm just going to pull back there. Leave the axles off the back if they get in the way. You know, all this stuff, just leave that off. And you know, this seals up pretty nicely. Makes for a pretty respectable display that is independent of the theme. And that is easy to leave off as well. You know, the whole thing works out pretty well. So just for one last look, when it is fully possessed, that's what it looks like. You know, it's not that much of a difference. It's mostly just opening these up. I accidentally knocked that off. Not the first time I've done that. Close those up, rotate this around, push these back in, pull it from the back, and that's that. See, looks, looks pretty decent. Around the back, similar except for that and these things that stick out. Let's take a closer look at the figures now. Jack and Parker are returning main characters from the first season. They just have new headgear pieces that are dual molded each, but the clothes have not changed. So you'll see just a couple of variations of torso prints for these. And yeah, this is just mostly familiar looking stuff, except for what's going on with the heads. They've got their they're mobile devices that are running the Hidden Side app, <laughs> but, you know, in-universe, they're just searching for ghosts and such. And looking at these around the backs, they also have pretty good torso prints on the backs. And alternate face there, alternate face there. Very useful expressions, all four of them, in my opinion. Next up on the left is Klaus Stormward, and on the right is Jenny Napo. I believe that's how it's pronounced. It's N-A-P-O. Napo or Napo. With, uh, well, it looks like she's been underwater for entirely too long. And with the colors there, I don't know. Kind of looks like it's represented something rather, rather old. Like, has she just been suspended in animation underwater this whole time? Is she actually possessed by a ghost? We may never know, but then maybe you will find out through the hidden side. What's interesting here to me, mostly, is the inclusion of the air tank piece. 
which is an updated version of the classic space air tank piece in dark orange also goes with the the helmet and some of the other parts on here just imagine a classic spaceman or at least a neo classic spaceman or woman in dark orange i don't know how i feel about that it's interesting that it may be possible at some point in the future but yeah it's it's different i like getting different colors for things you can always use them for custom stuff here are the prints on the backs of the torsos one of them has an alternate face not the other and then finally the front's fully exposed and this guy looks like he could be like my older brother or something so hidden side does not include like hair pieces to go with these figures as alternates but instead they give you these parts to turn them into fully possessed versions of themselves so you can put whatever whatever headgear that you want on there but you know there are these two extra head pieces that are transparent and for the guy on the left you also get that very flowy but not glow in the dark bright spring green colored i guess wet beard or just blowing in the wind beard here's a skeleton so if you want you could pose that inside of the cave space he has either a megaphone there you know maybe this is a person that used to operate the lighthouse back before it was or it could be a foghorn back before there was technology like radios and everything or you could see it as a blunderbuss you know like a, a gun of some sort I mean, it's based around a agent's gun piece down in there use your imagination figure out how you want that to go or try to tie it into the canonical story it's entirely up to you it's just a skeleton with a thing the set also includes this most 80s water scooter jet ski ski do thing ever made by lego by a long shot i mean this is so much more 80s than anything they ever did in the 80s it's it's just ridiculous and it's because of the colors mostly a little bit with the style also this has a ghost detector on the side of it you can easily leave that off if you want but this is pretty cool for what it's intended to be i hate the colors myself but i get it and it you know it makes sense again for what it's supposed to be and you can put two figures on there these are the spare parts and they are numerous and kind of fantastic if you ask me even before looking over at the left side just the regular spare parts here i mean the two by two painted uh silver almost chrome metallic dish there the golden gun piece the golden unicorn horn piece this candle flame an extra beard piece i mean one of those little guys the all black microphone that's all interesting stuff but then there are all of these this is an entirely new for 2020 pack of blast and splat pieces so you can use those however you want this style has a bar on one side and a bar on the other put in a hand you can put in a hollow stud do whatever you want these fit particularly well over hands because there's a bar underneath you know so you can kind of show energy that's building up in the hand of a a, uh, a ghost of some sort or these can be like lightning hands coming out just attach into a figure's hand there or you know hang them from something these also work really well attached to hands because of the placement there but again you can use it with a hollow stud or anything like that to put it onto something and then this one I'll pick that up over here has a stud sized hole or an anti-stud sized hole so you can attach that to a single stud anywhere absolutely anywhere and the idea is that this would be just like ectoplasm unlicensed ectoplasm <laughs> that's uh, you know just stuck up to a wall or something so you get all of these and you can use them however you want you can use them however you want also finally this is what the spent sticker sheet looks like so you have an idea of how many stickers are used in total and again most of those so these two and all these up here are used just to represent wear on the outer surface of the, the lighthouse and then the others are just little details survey says 50 dollars us for this here set that's not too bad i mean if it was a city set it would be 70. nah at least 60. if it was star wars it'd be 70. if it was done as a city set it would have far less detail and a couple more very very obvious action features probably less figures yeah 
be probably 70 bucks. I think this is a pretty good deal, pretty decent deal, considering the fact that Lego is expensive. You know, just letting that letting that go, just being at peace with that fact. It is a, a premium toy and or collectible system. Uh, 50 bucks for this amount of stuff, for this level of sophistication, the number of pieces, the sizes of pieces, the number of figures, how good they are, it all makes sense to me personally. I'm not happy with all of this. Like, <laughs> this Ski-Doo jet ski thing. <laughs> the color scheme is just so over the top. It just goes so far into everything that I personally hated about the 80s. That I kind of hated it. And it's, it's purely just bias for that. You know, I just think of the outfits that would be worn and I just think of, you know, like Southern California beaches and and Florida <laughs> in the 80s. It's just so terrible. So I kind of hate that for that reason, though the build is good. Uh, the build of this is mostly good. I do wish that it came with an extra piece for the lens up here so that you wouldn't have to see the eye for the other side if you didn't want it, if you didn't want it. Uh, other than that, everything else that's kind of monster and uh, you know hidden side specific to this, as I already showed, is easy to either hide away or leave off completely. That said, if you do leave that stuff off, it's great. Uh, I think that a lot of people will buy this and enjoy it, or at least be able to enjoy it, be interested in buying it as something that's not intended to be used for a hidden side. You know, folks who will never download that hidden side AR app We'll get this and we'll just stick it in the corner of a layout somewhere. Uh, put it, you know, hook it up with the uh, the old time uh, fishing shop or something like that off to the side, you know, and just use it as a shore side thing. That's just normal because it does look plenty good. Now, it's not built all the way around. It would definitely be a lot more expensive if, if it was. Probably they could have built maybe <laughs> another quarter of it if they left all the hidden hidden side specific stuff out of this build maybe but it still wouldn't be full it would, it would definitely be more expensive if it was full around and i think it's okay that they did it this way because it does look so good from a, a wide range of angles you know you, you have that 90 degree viewing range there which is so much better than than ones that are that are that are set up you know structure based sets that are just a facade so you start to turn it you see that oh there's nothing there you know this, this is this is a nice compromise. Lots of usable space to put figures, even though the interior space is definitely limited. Uh, still, you can put figures on it, about it, around it, under it, and stuff. So I think that just generally speaking, it's a pretty successful set. It was enjoyable to put it together too because nothing gets too boring or repetitive. I really liked how they added these, these fronts, these foldable fronts on because it's all studs on the side. Construction, the studs are forward. That was, that was pretty cool. There's only just a little strip of, of stacked stuff along the back here. And, you know, you do sub-assemblies. It goes together fairly quickly. I really like the dock area. I like what they did with the, the terrain on this. So just generally speaking, a pretty well done set, whether you want it for hidden side purposes or not. And the price, I think, is reasonable. I, I couldn't ask for it to be much better. If you can get it for, for less, great but 50 is not a ripoff in my personal opinion. I did try out the, the AR app, the game, the latest update to the game with this set in particular. I was having a little bit of trouble. It might've been device specific or something that was going on, but I was having a little bit of trouble with it registering my taps for attacks against ghosts. For the most part, it hasn't changed since last year. Last year when I reviewed all of the original sets for Hidden Side, I tried to show gameplay footage for every single one and it's, it's, it's just the same from one to the next. Like you see the thing, you see some stuff around the edges and then you tap to shoot at ghosts. It's the main thing that you do, you know, you search for things. This one does add in, or this year does add in some new things that you can search for with these little discoverable areas. And the biggest thing that they've added in this year to the app game is local multiplayer. So you can have one person being the ghost hunter like before with or yeah yeah with a set excuse me with a set and you can have other people playing as ghosts which previously could be done 
even without a set. You could just do it free with the app. I'm just destroying everything here. I'm ruining everything. The, the video is ruined. Uh, but then you can have the two together. So you can have one person playing as a ghost hunter and seeking them. And you can have multiple other people in the same area, the same physical space, playing as the ghosts. And, you know, like directing their ghosts around, hiding them, having them change colors and everything. So you can actually have a multiplayer experience with it, a local multiplayer experience. That's a nice upgrade. Appreciate it. But still, I don't personally find the app experience to be a huge add to this. I feel like it doesn't add that much. And interestingly, I've continued to get feedback from parents as well as kids on occasion about uh, and uh, Lego store employees about how these hidden side sets are being used and how they are being uh, perceived by customers. And a lot of folks, well, from what I've heard, a lot of parents in particular are not big fans of the whole AR app integration thing because they want their kids to be getting off their dang phones and playing with something physical. So when they get Lego sets, they don't want them to be integrated with online stuff or, you know, mobile app based stuff. And there does remain the confusion with the packaging of these hidden side sets. Some stores will still put them on shelves backwards so that you can actually see what you're getting. Although I, I feel like the graphic design, the specifics of the graphic design work done this year is, are a little bit better, a little bit more clear. Like that is a lot more clear, I think, than a lot of the ones from, from last year, just Lighthouse. But still, it's, I think it's better to show the actual product fairly realistic, if not an actual photograph, to just kind of let you see immediately what it is. As it is right now, you either kind of look at it and wonder about it some more, like how much is that, how much of that is real, and is this just trying to be an art print or something, and then maybe that'll get your your curiosity peaked, which can be a good thing, or you just see all of them on the shelves fairly close to each other, and they all look kind of the same, and it all just becomes a blur. I've seen folks having that problem as well. Anyway, enough on that. You can see the build for this. I did the real-time build as usual. And I also have the speed build. Check out either one if you'd like to. I'll be back here very soon with my next video. So I'll talk to you again then.